Hi everyone, welcome back to Lead Coding. So I'm your host Faraz and in this video we'll be solving the second question of the assignment in dynamic programming. I gave you an assignment to complete for this uh, linear dynamic programming and in that assignment there were five questions. I hope you guys have solved those questions and if you find any difficulty you can follow along with this video so as to learn the most optimized approach to solve those problems. So this is the second solution solution to the second problem perfect square given an integer n return the least number of perfect squares that's sum to n so basically we are given a number n and we have to tell how many least number of perfect squares can make this submission as 12 so the answer here is 3 we can have 3 fours. So 4 is a perfect square basically these are perfect squares 1 4 9 16 25 and so on so here in this case it is 4 so the first approach that comes in our mind is the greedy approach because as we want to minimize the total number of perfect squares we can use so let's say if the example is 12 so what most people would do is they would try to take the maximum possible perfect square in this case okay and that is equal to 9 yeah so if we can take 9 out of this 12 3 will be left okay we took out 9. 9 was a perfect square and we reduced 9 from 12 and we we have uh, 3 now. Now again what is the maximum perfect square here in this case? It is 1. So we can reduce 1 from this and we will be left with 2. Now what is the perfect square that we can reduce from here? Again it is 1. We are left with 1 after this the perfect square that we can reduce from this is again 1 we reduce 1 we are left with 1 and again 1 so how many steps did we take this is the first step this is the first step that we took second third fourth so we took four steps in total that is why the greedy strategy is not appropriate to use here okay so now we will try with all the possibilities now let me explore all the possibilities here the number that is given to us is 12 and the first possibility will be to reduce 1 from here 1 is the perfect square second possibility is to reduce 4 third possibility is to reduce um, what is after 4 that is 9 then I think this is it yeah 1 4 9 so these are the three perfect squares that we can reduce from 12 anything uh, above 9 that will be 16 and we cannot reduce 16 because that is in fact greater than the number 12 so we'll go up to 9 so these are the three possibilities the greedy approach would be to select the number 9 as it is the maximum and we want to reduce the total number of perfect squares that we are using so that would be greedy but we are not going to go greedy in this we will be exploring all these possibilities okay so here we will be left with 11 here we will be left with 8 here we will be left with uh, 3 now again exploring 11 we can reduce 1, 4 and 9 here also we can reduce 1, 4 and 9 not 9, N uh, 9 in this case will give us minus 1 ok uh, and what about 3 we can reduce 1 not even 4 ok so now we will be left with 10 7 2 8 minus 1 is uh, 7 then 4 here it is 3 minus 1 is 2 okay so these are the numbers we are left with now again exploring all these numbers so exploring uh, this number 10 so again we can reduce 1 4 and 9 from uh, the number 7 we can reduce 1 and 4 from the number 2 we can reduce only 1 from here we can reduce 1 and 4 from here we can reduce 1 and 4 <coughs> from here as well we can reduce um, one only one so we will be left with here it is nine here it is uh, four six here it is one in this case it is seven minus one is six this is three this is this is one and this seven minus one is six so he here it is three here it is three here it is zero we got a zero here okay we got a zero here we finally reached till zero and here we will be left with 1 so the least number of steps we got is this much 1 2 and 3 we got 3 steps okay 
Now this is how we are supposed to explore all the possibilities and we will notice one thing here. While exploring all these possibilities, we are going to notice one thing. And that is, there is a lot of repetition here again in this question. So we are calculating the um, answer for 7 here. I don't know why is it not working, the highlighter. Okay, yeah. We are calculating it for uh, for 7 here. And again we are calculating it for 7 over here. And is there uh, anywhere else we are exploring 7? No. But we are exploring 2 here, we are again exploring 2 here. We are exploring 3 here, we are again exploring 3 here. So there's a lot of repetition. Once we explored one particular thing, we should not explore it again. And that is why we'll be using dynamic programming to solve this question. We will store whatever we have explored and we will um, use DP. Now, now for those who already know what BFS is, if you don't know what BFS, we will come back to this topic very soon. So you don't have to worry about this. I'm just giving a hint for people, those who know what BFS is. So can you think this question in terms of BFS, the breadth first search? Anyhow, we are um, reaching till zero. We are trying to find out the minimum steps to reach till zero. So we can also use BFS in this question. So this is just a hint for those who know what BFS is. They can try implementing it with that. But again, coming back to dynamic programming, we are going to solve this using DP. Okay. So in those questions where we cannot use greedy and there's a repetition, we are most likely to use dynamic programming there when we want to explore all the possible um, all the possibilities here so we are exploring each of the possibilities and in such questions if there's a repetition we can easily use dynamic programming you will get a taste of it when you solve more questions on dp so let's just jump and try to write the code of this again i have created a helper function as i usually do now the base condition should be if n is equal to zero if the given number n is equal to zero how many numbers do we need to add to make the, the summation as n uh, the answer is going to be zero okay we don't need any number now I, I'm exploring all the possibilities so for int i is equal to 1 i smaller than I mean i into i is smaller than or equal to n okay i plus plus I hope uh, you guys know what this is basically we want to go uh, till the point the square of the i is, is smaller than or equal to the given number n now here in this case uh, I'm taking an answer answer is equal to as you want to reduce the answer I am taking it as int max okay now answer is equal to minimum of answer comma uh, we took the number i here we took the number i square here okay so for that we took one number that is i square and now my n will be n minus i into i so basically uh, this is this part is going to give me how many total steps do we need okay and finally return answer from here <clears throat> let me just try to explain it again so int option this option is going to be 1 plus 1 is the number that we are using here <clears throat> it is giving us one number plus I will ask recursion to bring me the answer when the number that is left is n minus i into i I want the answer for this that how many steps how many minimum steps are we going to take to reduce this particular number to zero or to make the summation um, of all the perfect squares at equal to this particular number okay I hope you understand this so this is the option and answer will be equal to uh, the minimum of previous answer comma the option and finally returning the answer let me just try to run this or returning from here n and let me just run this meanwhile I'm creating um, the vector DP so it is giving me correct answer it should give us TLE if I don't apply dynamic programming here because um, it is going to be an exponential solution so now I want to convert it from exponential you can see this tree is exponential like uh, the steps on in each step it is uh, further uh, ex uh, expanding down below okay so this is an exponential solution if I want to uh, reduce it to a linear solution I should use DP here okay so that once I calculated a particular state I should never calculate it again so for that making a DP of uh, the size that should be equal to n because I want to hash n so 10 raised to the power 4 given the constraints are 10 raised to the power 4 so I will be making it like this one extra extra one for safety initializing this with minus one uh, I think our answer can never be minus one so minus one will denote that this particular state of DP has not been calculated yet and it is empty okay so in case if this state 
I will be passing this uh, in, in this function but in case if dp of n is not equal to minus 1 that means it has been already calculated so just return dp of n otherwise before returning anything just store dp of n so that in future we can use it now passing it uh, here vector of int dp and in this function call and over here in this function call dp let me try to run this and see if it is working correctly it is giving me correct answer let me just submit this now okay so basically this is the dynamic programming solution this is called top down dynamic programming okay this is the top down dp now i want to convert from top down that is using recursion to iteration can we uh, solve the same using iterations yes of course we can so for that um, I will make this dp array as it is now what state of dp can we calculate using the base condition when n is equal to 0 okay so dp of 0 should be equal to 0 this condition the first base case is handled after that uh, we are supposed to calculate the rest of the things so to calculate uh, the particular i the current i we need the answer for okay uh, I is making confusion here so to calculate the current n I need the answer for n minus i into i okay so I need to calculate the answer of previous states actually n minus uh, i into i this is the state which is previous to n okay something that has been already calculated so this state is previous that's why I should be calculating from start so for int I'm taking a variable um, that variable might be j uh, j is equal to 1 j uh, smaller than equal to n j plus plus now I want to calculate the jth state for the jth state I need the answer for j minus i into i where i uh, for i I will run a loop here so for int i is equal to 1 i into i is smaller than equal to n i plus plus not n here actually in this case I should be using j i plus plus okay and here dp of the particular state j is equal to minimum of uh, what is supposed to be the option here the option int option is equal to 1 plus dp of instead of this help I will be writing dp dp of j minus i into i okay okay yeah so minimum of option comma dp of j there's one more thing that I need to do so instead of initializing it in minus 1 I can because I don't need uh, minus 1 here I don't want to check if the state is calculated or not so I'll be just initializing this with int max uh, why int max because I want to reduce this here int max okay finally I will be returning uh, dp instead of help uh, instead of calling help for n I will return dp of n again it is giving me correct answer let me just submit this now it got accepted this is the bottom up dynamic programming okay uh, the complexity of both this is uh, same the space complexity is also same because we are using this dp vector which is of size 10 raised to the power 4 the time complexity is also same and what is the time complexity it is equal to big O of n here big O of n for this loop and for this loop it is every time uh, like for all the j's it is like log not log uh, or square root sqrt square root of 1 plus sqrt of 2 plus so on till the end okay so we can see here this term approximately it is equal to um, n raised to the power 3 by 2 under root of 1 plus under root of 2 plus under root of 3 so on till under root of n is approximately equal to this one so just remember this okay and this is the uh, time complexity of the solution while the space complexity is big o of n because we are using only n spaces okay so this is it for the video if you like it make sure that you subscribe to the channel 
and hit the bell icon if you want to get more such content in future. Thank you.